and invite him into this place. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we ask right now, oh God, you'd move in this place today, Lord. I ask right now, oh God, you'd have your will and your way today, Lord. Let your love rain down in this house, oh God. Lord, I pray right now you would use us for your glory today, Lord. Lord, I ask your anointing, oh God, would just rain down in this place, Lord. Fill this house with your presence, oh God. We ask right now you would bless the Sunday school classrooms right now. Oh God, touch within them today. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, be in this Sunday school service. Touch pastor as he speaks to us, Lord. Lord, we want nothing but what you want, oh God. We want your will be done, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Let's give him a hand clap of praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In God's One day, how cool. 
across that river and I'll fight life's fight no more with pain oh yes and then has death gives way to victory I'll see the lights of glory Most people take that scripture out of context. They all take it as, well, if you believe on him, then you are saved. But the truth of matters is, and I always say this within reading the context of scripture, if you don't understand the, the, the text of the scripture, if you take out the text of the scripture, then all you have left is a con. Right. And when you understand that what he was talking about in that particular passage of scripture was, is that there were many things that were going on and what they were told was to tell people that the disciples had came in the middle of the night and had robbed him and taken him away out of that tomb. And there was a conflict that was going on in the region that says, well, Jesus actually rose from the dead or he's still dead and the disciples just took him away. And so when it says, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what it was really saying is, is if you believe that Jesus actually rose from the dead, then you shall be saved. That was the imperative factor of it. So when we sing the song, uh, that how, how we know that how Redeemer lives and He's alive and all those things, we are saying that God rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. And because He got up, we have the chance ability to get back up as well. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter number 5. Today I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Today, today is going to be a great day. I'm determined to make it great determined to make it great. I desire your prayers uh, today and in, yet tonight as well. I'll be preaching tonight at the Marable Women's Prison tonight and, and I, want, I want the Lord to use me and a, uh, I'm excited about that opportunity to preach um, to preach to people that are hungry for the word of the Lord. Uh, be, preach to people that, that desire for God uh, to move in their life. And so uh, I desire your prayers tonight. Mark chapter 5 today, I want to start something 
today, something that I believe that will that our community needs, something that I believe that our world needs to hear more about. Um, I want to talk this morning uh, about this subject, but Mark chapter 5, verse 1, it says, And they came over into the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadareans. And when he was come up out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. When you, when you read that particular portion, and you have someone that has an unclean spirit, and the Bible says, and no man could bind him, you must assume that someone has tried to bind him. Okay, just not really, really difficult there, but someone had tried to bind him. No, not with chains. So they've really upped the ante really quick here, and they've, they've, this is a mess of a situation. This is a mess. And you've got someone here that uh, is so out of control that they're, they feel that they have to bind him with, with some of the hardcore elements of change just to get him to either stop hurting other people or stop hurting himself. Or Either way you think of it, he's a danger to society. And so they've, they've, they've taken this extreme measure. But the Bible goes on and says, and had plucked... Uh, and had been plucked asunder, asunder by him, and the feather and the fetters broke in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Now this is this is different because when you try to bind someone, uh, if you're a police, if you're a police, if you ever uh, watch that that show called Cops. If you try to bind someone, you're, you're telling them you're out of control. I can't control you. And the only way, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and the only way that you can control is if you bind them, if you bind them up. And you're basically telling them you're out of control. I'm binding you because of this particular reasons. But I think that they've misdiagnosed the problem, to be honest with you, because of the fact that the Bible says that the, the fetters broke in pieces, no man could tame him, they bound him with chains. But, but here we find in verse number five, it says, night and day he was in mountains and in tombs crying. What is crying? Crying is a breaking down of oneself. It's, a, it's an inward tearing down. And I take that scripture as we start today because I think it's imperative for us to understand that just because someone appears hardcore on the outside doesn't mean that they're a lost case totally on, on the inside. And in, in 2017, a lot, a lot of what we're going to talk about today, a lot of our teenagers, they are putting on a persona that they're unreachable, untouchable. I'm hardcore. Um, I'm different. I'm, I'm completely different. And what they're doing is, is they're putting a smoke screen up that's letting you know, don't get near me. I'm, 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 I'm who I am, I'm, not, I'm different, I'm this, I'm that. And, and, and so, but, but I would encourage parents and grandparents and guardians in this room today to understand that just because someone puts a wall up doesn't mean a wall can't come down. And it doesn't mean that they don't want it to come down. And I hope to dive more into that. But, but I just want to throw that in there because the Bible says he's in tombs, he, he's isolated himself, he was crying, he was cutting himself with stones. He was taking stones and was cutting himself. But when he saw Jesus afar off, when he saw hope afar off, when he saw a light at the end of the tunnel afar off, the Bible said he ran and worshipped him. This hard, cold case of someone that was cutting, someone had a wall up, when he saw hope, finally, he opened up. He opened up out of that shell and came running uh, and worshiped him. The Bible says he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High? I adjure thee by, by God, and thou that thou torment me not. That thou torment me not. For he, for he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And when he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And so today, I want to tackle on, on, a, on a couple of fronts here today, and I'm going to, I'm going to try my best to uh, uh, just talk to us today, just talk to us today um, in, this, in this class about a message entitled, Cut No More, Cut No More. 
And I pray that, that uh, we be very sensitive today, what's going on in our world today, because the church will never be able to reach a world when they don't try to reach what the world is going through. Okay, so today's gonna be different today. Today's gonna be different, but this is, this is, this is a problem in our, in our world today. I think that we've, I think the church has the answers. I think the word of God has the answers. And so I'm gonna attempt to go there today. Let's all pray. Jesus, we love you, Lord, today. Thank you for a Sunday school class today. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy, God. I thank you, Lord, for all that you are in our lives, God. You are so precious. You are so great and mighty, God. I pray, Lord, that you touch someone today. Help them, Lord, to be able to get exactly what they need from you you, Lord, today. Help us, God, as we prepare, God, to reach our community. Help us have a, a sense of compassion, a sense, Lord, of, of care for our community and for the people in our community, Lord. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And I said, in Jesus' name, you may be seated today. My first question Today is why. Why would someone feel that they need to cut themselves with a rock or cut themselves with a knife? Or in many cases that I have had the chance to sit across uh, in my office or in my living room, use a, um, use a, a, sharp, a sharp knife, a razor blade knife to cut themselves, to in, 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 ensure harm upon themselves. Why do they, why do they do this? You see, I've got looking and, and, and this is an epidemic in our teens, but, but, but when teens feel sad, distressed, anxious, confused, the emotions might, uh, might be so extreme to their life. This can be caused by certain elements of, of devastation in their life. Yes, some teens cut themselves because they feel guilty because mom and dad got divorced. Yes, some teens feel uh, that, that they have no coping methods when that boyfriend breaks up with them, that they don't know what to do. This generation is different from my generation. It just is. Um, we had very different kind of things. We would, uh, when, when life uh, hit us hard and things happened to us, uh, I was just different. I'd go outside and play baseball. I'd ride my bike. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd have a friend over. Um, um, I would get involved in a hobby, and there's many things that I got involved in because I had purpose, and there's some things that we had purpose. I thank God that I had strong parents. Um, uh, you know, perhaps when I was, when I was younger, uh, perhaps when you had uh, relationship problems and, and, that, and that girl broke up with you, I had a mom that never would let me just lay around and mope on the couch all day, you know. Get up, you know, get up. You know, I, I heard that conversation. There's many fish in the sea. I mean, who's ever heard that before, you know? You know, that's a, it's a really great story, you know. Ask me later how it sounded, I'll tell you. You know, there's more fish in the sea, you know. Get up, quit whining. Um, you know, I had a dad that, would, that, that, that didn't let me be a victim. Uh, you know, wouldn't let me. I, you know, get up, you know. We, you're no shell. Get up here, you know, quit crying, you right. know, quit messing around. Just, just some of those particular things. And, and, and I had coping methods. I had things that I would do. Uh, to get my mind off it, some productive things that I would do to get my mind off of it. Yeah. But when you, don't, when you have a generation that doesn't have a purpose, they don't know who they are. They don't know who they are. They've been sucked in by Hollywood and sucked into a generation. And, and, and just, just being real with you today, I'm, I'm going to try my best to be real with you as much as I can. When you have that, that teenage girl that doesn't look like the magazine and they feel that they're never going to be able to find anyone that will love them and care for them and, and they don't have anyone to talk to and the dysfunctionality of families where, where we have kids that are living in homes of parents that they don't even talk to. They text them more than what they actually talk to them. And, 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 and we've got the dysfunctionality of, of homes that we have where, 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 where some, mothers, uh, some mothers spend more time partying than what they do spending quality time talking to their kids. 
Or some fathers, some fathers believe that their only role is to, 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 is, is to provide the money, and, but, but to have contact or, or uh, in a, a, a mental, emotional investment in the kids is not in their, and not in their ballpark. And, and I, will, I will say this to add this in there as well, is that we, we're having a lot of families right now that are having to learn how to father because they did not have a father. We're having a lot of mothers right now that are having babies that they're having to learn how to mother because they didn't have an example of a mother that would stick with them in their life. And, and, and now, the, now the rubber's meeting the road to where now our kids are now having a hard time coping with certain elements of change that happens in everyone's life. And, 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 and when you're told that every kid feels that, well, you're a special, uh, you're a special kind of kid. You've got a special design of a family. But, but really the truth of the matter is that this is a lie. Because even from the beginning of time, that families have always had an had a issue. There's always been an issue with families. We can go back to Noah. Look at, look at Noah's daughters. I mean, we ain't going to get into that. But, 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 but look, at, look at all the elements. I mean, you've got Joseph. I mean, his own siblings hate him. I'm not even going to get into Adam and Eve. I mean, I mean we all know what their kids. I mean, their kids have some issues. Ooh, praise God. But in this day and age, we are, we are, we are being sold on the fact that, that we're different and that we can't make it and we have no coping methods. And, and, and I was very tempted. I was very tempted last night. I was, I was looking over this and I, just, I was like, God, just give me something that will connect to this generation. I was so tempted to call up a few, a few, uh, a few of, 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 of my family members. Is, and, and I've got a great brother-in-law, uh, Kyle. He's not here yet today. But, 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 but in his family and, and all of his brothers, they, they came from a very different background. But if you look at their life, Life, and I'm not going to share their whole testimony. I'll let them share it to you. But in their whole life, they didn't have the typical family. But now as you look at their life, I mean, they own businesses. One's a police officer. And I mean, on the news every other week. But, you know, just, just all these other things, you know. I mean, just success. Success. That you don't have to have a cookie cutter life being raised up to be able to make it. You don't have to have this victim mindset that says, I can't make it, or I, I, have, I don't have the tools that I need to get the job done. You see, you see this generation that we're living in today, and, I, and, and our kids today, we're, 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 we're being taught everything but the right tools that we need to make it, to be able to have coping skills in life. And, 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 and I don't care if it's coming from a divorced home. I don't care if it's coming from an abusive home. I don't care if it's coming from a home where, 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 where your mom said you're stupid or you're lazy or your dad said you're ugly or it doesn't matter. It, there's all these things that are being instilled in your mind that you've got to have an understanding that regardless of what comes at me, I can make it. I can make something of myself. But the, but the problem is, is this, is that we've got too many, too many of our teenagers right now, they have no idea how to cope with grief, how to cope with sadness, how to cope with, with this anxiety and how to cope with confusion and 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 we've we they they're taking it to the extreme and satan has capitalized he's capitalized on their feelings and he's offered them a quick solution to be able to to allow for them to feel again to feel again and 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 there's many things in life and 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 I want to I talk this way, and I'm just going to give you some facts, and then we're, we're going to get going as long as I can today, and then we'll pick it up next week. I'm sorry, the week after, because next week's our picnic. But, but here's some, some symptoms that I think that's imperative for parents, parents to, to, to be aware of. And I want, I, want, I, want you, I want you to listen to me today, but it, it doesn't matter if you come from a poor family or a rich family. I've counseled kids that have, have cut that were in poor families, and I've counseled kids that were, had come from very rich families that they are doing the exact same thing. I have counseled kids that were not raised in church that cut. And I've also counseled kids that were raised on a church pew that have cut. So it doesn't, you got to get this stereotype out of, you, out, of, out of your mind that says, well, you know, they come from a bad, a bad area. Uh, they're, they're, that's why they're cutting. No, I've, I've actually counseled uh, kids that have two parents that are together and, I've, and that cut and kids that are, have divorce that cut. So this is, this is a clear across the board spectrum. 
parents, you must be mindful. You must be involved. You must care. And some signs that I think that you need to, to, to look out for is, is, is scars. You need to look out for scars and certain things that are upon them. Kids will do a very good job. Most kids do not cut. They do not cut in places where you can see at first. They don't cut in places. They'll cut under their skirt. They'll cut in places on, on their sides, places that mom and dad normally wouldn't look at, the inner part of their thigh, many particular places that these kids will cut. Parents, you look for scars. You look for fresh cuts, scratches, bruises, or other wounds. You want to look for excessive rubbing uh, of an area to create a burn because some kids, they don't start out just by cutting. They do certain things to build up to cutting. So they'll, 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 they'll pick at a, at a, at a scab that, that just will never seem to heal in your mind, but really the problem is, is that they keep picking at it. Um, they, when they keep sharp objects on, on hand, when wearing long sleeve shirts and it's 100 degrees out, or long pants, or in hot weather, or just whatever it is, difficulty. They're having difficulties in, in, in interpersonal relationships. that They're not connecting with anybody. And I, I think this is important, parents, but, 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 but your kid needs someone to play with. They need someone to fellowship with. They need someone to hang out with. If your kid is an isolationist, they're in very dangerous ground. You're in a very dangerous ground. Everyone needs somebody that they connect with, a friend. Our kids need friends, amen? Amen. I'm, I'm 40 years old. You know, I don't, I don't need as much as I used to. Uh, but, but every teenager needs friends, right. someone that they can, that they can, that they can go to. If they're just going at home, and I'm just gonna, I'm, we're talking this morning. If they're just going at home and they don't talk to anybody, they just go to their room and they turn off the lights and just lay and sleep all day long. These are warning signs for you. You need to be aware of what's going on. This is not a phase. This is a warning sign for you. When, 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 they don't, when they don't care about themselves, when they don't shower, when they don't do certain things or shave or do certain things to take care of themselves, these are warning signs for you, parents. Don't push it under the rug. You need to be mindful of these particular things. And, 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 and parents, listen. Listen to what is going on. When they struggle with personal identity, such as who am I? Uh, what am I doing here? You need to start listening to your life. Does my life have any hope? Uh, you know, will it get any better, Mom? Will it get any better, Dad? And, and, and certain aspects and things, behavioral issues uh, that, that, that really come into play. When kids don't ever want to be talked to, when you try to talk to them, they don't want to carry on a normal conversation, like, like they get mad when you say, good morning. Right. <laughs> Good morning. What are you doing me that for? Yeah, I'm not saying. I mean, when I was younger, I mean, I wouldn't think about talking to my parents that way because, I mean, you'd be slapped upside the head and picking yourself up. And then when you finally got back up, they'd put you right back down again. And you learn real quick. You don't, probably don't want to say that or you're going to get the same result. It just, it just kept on getting worse, you know what I'm saying? But in this generation, uh, when you have behavioral or emotional instability all the time, when you, uh, parents, when, you, when, when, when your child has quit crying, and they become calloused. And they've got that, that blank gray look in their eye where they don't care no more. And those particular things. When statements of helplessness and hopelessness and worthlessness. I still believe, and I'm talking about parents right now. I still believe, parents, you have a, a responsibility to tell your child, your daughter, or your son that they are beautiful. They are smart. Come on now. If you don't tell it to them, then Hollywood, will, what Hollywood won't, won't, won't tell it to them. Right. You need to tell that child. I don't care what they, what, what they look like. You're flat out beautiful. Don't you dare settle. Uh, um, um, honey, it, because what happens is, is this. What happens is, is this. Our children are made to feel worthless because our community is telling them that they're worthless. In our schools right now, for that child that doesn't look like the, 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 uh, the cheerleader, they're made to feel worthless. And most of the time, they've got two, two groups to fit in. The cool group or the loser group. Saying They don't sit at the table with the cool group because, you know, <laughs> you've got you to be a, a certain criteria. You've got to make X amount of money. You've got to do this. you got to have a car. And, and, and the problem is, is this, that, that when, they don't, when they don't have a purpose in life and when parents are not telling them that they are awesome, that they are beautiful, and that when parents don't care about how they dress and they don't care about how they look like and they don't care about. Now, I've got, uh, I've got a, a 9 and a 10-year-old and a 1-year-old that I can tell you uh, I could put them in 
the same clothes they wore last week and they wouldn't even know. Right. They, they wouldn't know. They don't, they don't care. <laughs> I mean, honestly, they would rather just go outside and play football and get grass stains everywhere, much to mom's disappointment. But, but it's it just one of those things. They don't care. But as a teenager gets older, a teenager cares. Because they are, they, it, it, it's what allows them to feel, uh, uh, um, if they don't have those particular environments, it, it, it causes them to feel hopeless and to, be, to feel worthless. It makes them feel like they're less of a person than what their, their, their peers are. And, and, and I want to I wanna keep on going, but there's a form of, of, of self-injury, perhaps cutting, scratching, burning. When your child is, is lighting everything with matches and, 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 and incense is a, is a very uh, a thing that our kids are, are getting back into. They're, they're lighting incenses in their rooms. And when, you, when, they're, when they're carving words on, on, a, uh, on, on wooden objects or on, they're carving words on their skin, today they're doing that. They're carving words on their skin. Uh, in fact, in, in there, was, there was one case of, of, of a person that I was talking to uh, long before I was, I was pastoring. Uh, this person had carved the word ugly on their, on their skin. They literally carved the word ugly on, on, on their skin to where when, when they saw it, when they showed it to me, it literally, ugly. And, 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 and why did they do that for? When I was young, I thought to myself, why are you doing that for? I mean, I mean and, and, but the problem is, is this, in that particular case, they're only putting on their skin how they feel. They feel ugly. They feel worthless. They don't feel like they're anybody. They were perhaps uh, some other signs that you need to look at when they're hitting and they're punching and they're taking out aggressiveness. They're very aggressive. They're, they, they've lost that care, that, that, that sensitivity, but they're very aggressive and perhaps piercing the skin with, with sharp objects, pulling out hair. This is something that you need to, to, uh, to, to look out for. Pers uh, persistently picking or, or, or interfering with wounds, healing in their life. And I, I think it's imperative today that, that parents you, you've got to be careful and I'm just I'm using this as an example and I'm pleading with you today it, you got to be careful because when your kids go through hard times like what I'm talking about today you, you want to make sure that you've not, you've not talked so bad about the youth leader and the pastor that they, that they know that they have someone to talk to after this really gets bad because at the end of the day, you may not need that, that, that spiritual leader in your life right now. But, but there might be a day that comes when you can't fix it because your mom and your dad. And I know, I know every parent in this room today, you know more than everybody else. And you know your kids like, like the back. I know that. But there comes a day in your life where great words by mom and dad mean nothing. You can say the same thing and then a pastor and a youth pastor or a preacher, a teacher, a minister comes in after you and they say the exact same thing that you say and it makes all the sense. Why? Because it's a different person saying it. And teenagers, and I, I mean, I, I was a youth pastor for a long time, 10 and a half years, a long time. I've seen it all. And here's the thing about it. There comes a point when mom and dad, you're not cool no more. There comes a point where mom, mom and dad, they don't know what they're talking about. And this is, this is phases. When, you, when, when kids are young, mom and dad are hero. When kids become teenagers, mom and dad become zero. Right. When you move out of the house, mom and dad become hero again. This is a different, and so parents, it's imperative for you to understand this, that, that if you, there's going, there might be a day when you'll need ministry in your child's life and you want to make sure you don't burn the bridge. You want to make sure that you don't burn the bridge because if you get rid of the help, if you, if, if you ruin the influence of help in their life, then how will they ever get the help they need in their life? And so, and so there has to be a point in your life to, when you have to admit to get help. In fact, uh, there's, there's, there's been cases of, of kids who, who have, at the very early stages of cutting, that they would try to give all these warning signs. Because let me tell you, that every cutter that I've ever known always wants help. Every single one of them always want help. They give signs left and right. But parents do have a hard time understanding, this is my kid. My kid needs help. And there's going to be a time in your life when you're going to look at the and look at this at, at the situation and realize, hey, guess what? This stuff just doesn't go away. You need spiritual, you need help in your life to where you can be able to give that kid coping methods and skills that they need in their life to be able to 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 function correctly and to be able to live uh, live correctly. And, and 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 let me tell you, I want to I want to go on this 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 cutting 
living spirit that we have in our generation right now. I want you to be very confident today when I say this, that the spirit of cutting, although they will say that, that most, most people who, who cut uh, do not commit suicide, but, but there's no doubt about it that this is a bridge to get there. This is a spirit sent by Satan himself that is leading you down a path of, of a suicidal life. If he can get you numb to the blood and the pain in your life, then hanging yourself won't be a big deal. There was a game that had, that had gone on. And this is, uh, I hope this is okay. This is, I'm educating parents and, and teenagers here this morning. There was a game that had went on that is, literally went around the globe. It's called the Blue Well Suicide Game. We've seen a lot of viral challenges in the last few years. Some, uh, some are harmless fun, some are ridiculous, some are sketchy, and, and, but none have been quite as disturbing as this Blue Well Challenge. And, 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 and parents, I, I want you, this is why it's so imperative for you to be involved in what your kids are watching on YouTube and Facebook. And, 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 and I, I'm just, you know, I've got, a, like I said, a 9, 10-year-old. My 19-year-old don't have a Facebook account. And I, that's my prerogative. That's, I'm a parent. And, and, and to my kids, if your kids are mature enough to do that, then that's on you. You're your parent. But my kids are not. I don't know what's on there. And unfortunately, with social media, there's, there's too much pornography on Facebook. That all they need is one moment. One moment in time where they look at something that they shouldn't be looking at and it's led them down the wrong path. But this particular, it's a dangerous game that encourages self-harm and eventually leads to suicide. And it was reported in the last few months, reports have emerged of dozens of deaths motivated by the game. Though much of this information is, 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 uh, is in a place where, where it, it, everything is hidden, everything is secret. Uh, you're encouraged not to show parents or guardians and these particular things. But what it does is, is it takes you from a very small place of just hurting yourself and, and just inflicting some kind of pain. Not, not necessarily cutting, but just some kind of pain. And in and, and order to, to, to go up in the game, you have to keep uh, uh, performing the acts. And, and it goes from level one to keep on going different levels and different particular things. And, and what happens is, is this, is that that child that is doing this particular challenge, they're becoming so numb to it that they don't realize that they're going from step one to step two to step three, ultimately to death because they're becoming numb to it. And this is, I believe, the trick of the enemy because, because I've never seen a day, nor did I ever dream of a day where we would have more kids addicted to games, to systems, to going to, to, the, to, the, to the supernatural world that we live in today where we're where, 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 when you were on the, that PlayStation, that Xbox all day long and you're killing people here and you're killing people there and, and kids have a very hard time of distinguishing of that which is reality to that which is not. And it's imperative to understand this because, because uh, uh, you have games just like this that, that literally uh, th there's certain people that are killing themselves and kids that are committing suicide. In fact, uh, just last year, I believe it was in... Uh, in Xenia, they had a kid that was being bullied at school that literally took a rope and hung himself in the bathroom. Because he was being bullied at school, um, they don't know how to cope with some certain things, and yet, and, and yet, I will add this as well: schools have not done a good enough job with stopping this garbage. They've not done a good enough job, and I will say this: that 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 reason why they haven't done a good job because it's not their kid. <laughs> If it, was their, if it was their kid, there would be rules in place that would stop this particular aspect. But, but what happens if schools won't do it? Parents and guardians, we've got to protect our kids' minds. You've got to protect your, your kids' minds. Don't think that it's just going to go away. You've got to be willing to, 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 to protect yourself, protect your mentality, protect your mind. In fact, there was, there was, one, there was one statistic. Every, every child from the age of five to, five to ten, 95 percent of them have been bullied at school. 95% of every child from 5 to 10 has been bullied at school. Parents, if we're not involved, then who will be responsible? 
And so all this happens and, and our kids don't know how to cope with certain methods and, and, and certain things. And I just want to add this on because my, my, I, for some odd reason, my time is just going so fast today. But, 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 but how in the world should a parent act if this, this cutting begins to take place? And I wrote down just seven things, seven things that I want to give you and I've got to get into a little bit more. But number one, number one, if you have a child that is doing this, I want to give you and I want to encourage you is don't belittle your child. Don't be, if they're coming to you for help, don't discourage them to come to, for help. I mean, I mean, you want to abstain from, from comments like, are you stupid? Are you dumb? Are you a moron? Or, or, or you know, I mean, don't you know any better? And, 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 and that won't work on your child. Number two, don't criticize them. Don't criticize, you know, every chance that you get when they, they have obstacles in their life, don't criticize them. Well, you're going to go to your room and cut yourself down. No, you're going to, you, don't criticize them. Number three, don't encourage their behavior by ignoring it. Right. Don't encourage their behavior by ignoring it. Most of the time when, you've, when you finally are aware of it, they've already done it four or five other times before that. Right. Don't encourage their behavior by ignoring it. Number four, don't allow for them to feel as if they are abnormal. Number five, find help. Put a solution, a spiritual solution together. Get involved. Get involved. Right. Number six, keep the channel of communication open. They messed up, you want to know that they messed up. They messed up, you want to know that they messed up. So you can encourage them to get back up. Right. And number seven, be patient. Right. Be patient. They probably didn't get there overnight, and they probably won't be done overnight. But, but this will help you to be more involved in their life. And so if we study, if we study what we, our, our scripture context that we read today within Legion, we understand that the community has not treated this case as what it should be treated. Because the community didn't know how to deal with it, they immediately kicked the situation out of their house. The community didn't know how to deal with this, so they said, get away from us. And this scares me about the church, to be honest with you, because if the church doesn't realize how to deal with these situations, what we do is, is this. It's easier for them to say, don't come back. Get out of here. We don't want you. Uh, too much work for us involved. That's a little bit weird and freaky. So what happens is, is this. When they come in needing spiritual answers and we ignore and don't give them the spiritual solutions, what we're saying to them is, is you're not welcome here no longer. Go out in the world and tell the world to tell you how to fix it. And the world can't tell them how to fix it because the, 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 the spirit that God gives us is the spirit of life. It's not the spirit of death. The Bible says that the enemy has come to steal, to kill, and destroy. But God has come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. If they're going to find life, they'll never find out in the world. They need to find it in the house of the living God. And so what happens is, is this, that the community, the community does not know how to treat the problem. And they honestly think that by, by chaining up somebody, they can allow, they can stop the person from inflicting pain upon the world. Now, here's the thing. Now, here's, here's the thing. Uh, the answer is, is they were half right and half wrong because they didn't care about him fixing himself. They technically, they technically caused him to go away to where he didn't inflict harm on them. But that didn't stop him from inflicting harm on himself. Are you with me? So technically, what they said to this, this man that uh, the, the demonic forces said it was legion, for we are many. Technically, what they said is, is like, hey, we don't know how to fix it. Get out of here. You're driving us crazy. Get out of here. Go live. Because they did not care about the individual. They just cared about the comfort of their life. And I wish I had time to talk about that, but I don't today. But, but, but church, I'll just add this. Church, if our church is at a place where we'd rather feel comfortable than help, than help those that are cutting, then we have missed the mark completely. Amen. Because, because if they're out there and they're they're killing themselves, you know, I I get weary. And there's you know every, you know these videos that are popping up everywhere about hey you know our, our morgues don't have enough room in it for all the people that are overdosing on drugs. How come is it the only time they make the news is when they're dead in the morgue? Right, 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 
You got all their pictures everywhere and body bags. And the promise is this, is that the church, the church has got to do a better job of helping the, helping the hurting to helping. And, and in this case here, these are our teenagers for the most part that are doing this particular thing. I think it's imperative that we understand, church, that when you have people that are coming to the front or perhaps visitors that are coming to this church, that they're coming to the front to pray, they're more than just praying for the, for God to forgive them of their sins. We got to get this small mentality out of our, of our mindset. Sometimes our teenagers are coming because they got scars that you can't see because I got them hidden with skirts. I know that, I, that, that, that pastor, I don't want to think about that because, because I just want people to come and ask for forgiveness of their sins. And, and, and the, the problem is, is this. In fact, in fact, I won't say who, but, but it just, I just heard a story yet just this, this morning where, 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 where a, a mother had been beating her, her, her daughter with a cane. And, 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 and God forbid, now this girl has a Holy Ghost. And, and, and here's the thing. It's no one at this church. Don't think, you know, no one at this church. But, but here's the thing. When that person comes, they're not just, they may not be coming just for God to forgive them of their sins. They may be coming because they still got the bruises on their back from getting beat with the cane. You got to get out of your shell for a hot second. We got people coming that they just got done shooting heroin just two nights ago. But yet, well, my God, look what they got. They got a mini skirt on that. Let me tell you, maybe they're just asking God to help them get rid of the, the, the addiction of heroin in their life if we're not careful. If we're not careful, we'll paint them with the same brush and we'll never help them with the, the, the demons that they're facing in their life. So church, parents, come on, Revival Church. If you want to be a Revival Church, learn to look past what you're seeing and learn to look at what the world is facing. Our kids, they're, 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 they're stealing their mom and dad's uh, uh, pain medications. They're, 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 they're literally, uh, they're, they're doing all kinds of things. There's a new drug that's going on. I've got so much. I, I got to, um, time has just gone out. But there, there's a brand new drug that they're doing right now that literally, literally gets them so close to death where they're just completely wigged out. And they, if you honestly, if you look at it, it looks like they're just even possessed. But what happens is, is this. The church, the church is so, we are such in a microcosm where we're only thinking, well, God forgive them of their sins. Well, of course God forgive them of their yeah. sins. But what about their habits? Yeah. What about their addictions? Yeah. What, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, do we want to be a church? And this is an honest question. It's an honest question. Do we want to be a church that just promotes this promotes salvation only? Or do we want to be like the Old Testament church and the New Testament church right. that helps right. people how to live for God? Right. Because what good is it if we baptize them in Jesus' name and they're going to go home and shoot heroin up their veins? Oh, praise God. I should have got a little bit more amens than that. What good is it if we, if we pray in the Holy Ghost and we shake Him and they pass out on the floor and we do this and we dead and, and we're saying, my God, you need to dance it out and praise it out when they just got done cutting themselves and they still got the blood stain upon their legs. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. And it's impaired to understand. This is why the church has got to be prayed up. This is why we got to be filled up. This is why we got to have a church that not only passes out band-aids, but we pass out the Lord's blood so that we can give them a blood transfusion his blood for their addiction we're so busy passing out band-aids <laughs> that we forget to give the blood my God forgive us Lord so busy about giving out band-aids I, I mean church I'm uh. Well, praise God, you've had the Holy Ghost for a month now. You need to start dressing right. <laughs> praise God. I'd rather, them, I'd rather them come in in pants until they get a revelation of holiness. So God can clean up their life. We got we to get out of this. And this is why churches are having a hard time reaching the community. And this is why most churches have no effect on their community. Because we're wanting to clean them up on the outside. And the problem is, is this, is we're only aiding and abating right. their cutting because we only give them something long enough to cover even more scars. Right, right. Wow. 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 That's good. Wow. 
at least when they was wearing whatever they was wearing, they was they had to have a hard time covering up. But now we letting them we letting them go down to the ankles, and they still they come in our churches, they speak in tongues, they work in ministry. Nine out, of, nine out of every ten kids. That's all, Stan. It's going to help me get done. I'm not even close to being done. We're going to continue this. I think it's something that our community needs. Our church needs this. Nine out of every ten kids know someone right now that is cutting. Nine out of every ten kids know someone right now that is cutting. In my opinion, it's probably more. Because we're going to school and we know what is going down. What's happening is, is this is that this is a spirit that is trying to get on this generation because Satan wants to kill you. He wants to get you so numb to what is going on that hanging yourself feels like a relief. Well, Pastor, I don't know if I want to feel like living no more. I think it will be better if I just go away. What has happened is, is that What's happened is, is you just became numb to everything. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be in my living room and sit next to a girl who comes in to my house. The weed is so strong that literally you got to open up a window. I know what it's like for her to show me and my wife scars. I know what it's like for her to try to kill herself not once, but twice, but three times. The last time by hanging herself, and the only reason why it didn't work because the fan broke. I know what it's like to have mom and dad, who's been in church their whole entire life, come to you and says, we don't know what to do. I know what it's like to be in an environment where these kids don't feel like they have a way out. Parents, don't take the solution out of their life. Because at the end of the day, and I'll end with this, at the end of the day, when sin brings you down, and when this brings you down, God is the only thing that can pick you back up. The community said, we don't want to mess with it because you're an inconvenience to our lifestyle. But if you remember with me, Jesus got on the boat. He went to the other side. Can you tell me any other miracles that he performed? None. Got on the boat. Saw Legion. Helped Legion. And he got back on the boat. Right? Why would God go out of his way to help someone that's broken. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? Thank you, Jesus. If you could help me pray right now, I want you to I want you to raise your hands right now. Some of you in this room know what I'm talking about. I admit some of you don't, but some of you in this room know what I'm talking about right now. Could you raise your hands and begin to pray? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, God. Hallelujah, God. Come on, parents, guardians, grandparents. I want you to pray a hedge of protection around your children right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, I went a little bit longer today, but we, we don't want to hurry this moment up. Pray ahead to protect around your, around your children right now. God, protect their minds, God. God, protect their hearts, Jesus. God, don't let them be bitter, God. I want to be an intercessory prayer for my kids, Lord. I want to be an intercessory, God, for our church kids. I want to be an intercessory for my community. I want to be an intercessory prayer warrior, God, for those that can't pray for themselves. God, allow for me to, God, care enough, Lord, where I can look at a a bad situation, God, and not turn away. But Lord God, help me, Lord, to look at this situation, God. And Lord, begin to do what you did, Jesus, and to run to it, God. To apply the solution, God, to help them, God, at a time and a point, a place of need. 
Help me, God, Lord, to, to, to be able to be the, the medicine, to give them the medicine that they need to recover from this, God. I pray, Lord, that our teenagers, God, would not look at themselves, God, as abnormal, not look at themselves, God, as just some kind of a messed up person in society. But, Lord, I pray, God, that their eyes would be open, God, to realize, God, that they don't have to do this, Lord, because you already love them just the way that they are, God. Help us, God, to care. Help us, God, to care for our community. One more time, could you love the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh, help me to see through your eyes, oh God. Help me to see through your eyes, oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The name of Jesus we pray today. I'm going to talk about this again. Next week, we got our picnic. The week after that, I want you to be mindful of this. Please be mindful. Be in prayer. Be in prayer. And, and let's show the love of the Lord to our community. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I love you, Lord, today. Thank you for our Sunday school class, God. I thank you, God, for a great spirit, Lord, to teach in today. Help us, God, to be more like you. Help us, God, to have the patience, God, the perseverance, God, to help our community, to help those that are even sitting in our church pews, God. Help us to care and love like you do us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Shake someone's hand today. We'll be back here very shortly.